Decision time here in the upper bracket. Best of three between Fortitude and Mikael. The winner will be qualified. The loser will drop to the lower bracket and have another chance tomorrow. Both winning their first match with a 2-1 score. Fortitude doing so against TBC and Mikael doing so against Yangi. Now, we will have the encounter here. The everlasting rivalry of China versus Korea. Oh, wait, I forgot something. China vs. Korea. Um, who's going to come out on top? I think this is very evenly matched. I haven't seen them go up against each other in a while. And what do we see here from Mikael? It's a DK. Ghouls. With the second ziggurat. This is pretty unusual. The, uh, the plan here might be to fast expand... With a DK. Alright. Archmage first, of course, by Fortitude. Playing this pretty standard. Going for a small... Militia creep at the beginning. Play scouting with a footy. Wants to find out what he's facing. Could be Cryptlord expansion, could be Ted Fiends, or a more unconventional build like this one. DK with ghouls and backpack. Hmm. Mr. Mikael coming up with something special here, it seems. A player's forces are under attack. So he doesn't save the Acolyte from the early game, which means he may not be expanding. Very good scouting here with the footy. Fortitude always aware of what's going on, and Mikael is running across now to harass... Well, actually he's not, he's creeping level 2 first. Alright, so there's going to be a safe creep for Fortitude. He's going to get all the experience, he's not going to take too much damage here. But after, when he starts the Town Hall... Then his peasants might be in trouble. Level 2 DK. Oh yeah, this is... Ooh. This could be scary. Why is it dust? Wait, what? In case that the Archmage might have... A Rod of Neck... Uh, a Cloak of Shadows. Interesting. Alright, in we go. He bought a dust but didn't buy the... Uh, this. God damn it, I'm not finding the words today. <laughs> the Road of Necromancy. Oh, and Fortitude also delaying the building of the Town Hall. I kind of like that. When the Town Hall is building and the peasants are around it, that's when they're most vulnerable. Thank you very much. Just watch OK with a 16 month resub. Oh, trying to surround... Oh! Ooh, that was close. Oh, he might still have it. He does have it. Surround the Archmage has a TP away. And that kind of exposes the peasants over here. We'll definitely see one ghoul coming in now to bring out of Necromancy. Another surround, but only against the footman. I think Fortitude is fine here losing footies as long as these peasants also arrive. And I think not a single peasant has died yet, which is kind of crazy. And the Arcane Tower finishes here quite early. That's a big deal. Probably now a few ghouls are going to go down. One ghoul falls. Two peasants die in return. But it's only two peasants dying in the early game. This seems to be totally fine for Fortitude. However, Lumber is looking rough. No Lumber Bank at all here. As the expansion Blade finishes, Tier 2 is going to take quite some time still. Mikael's Tier 2, on the other hand, also wasn't the very fastest. Not as fast as with Ted Fiend build. Oh! Oh, by accident, he dropped a lot of necromancy here. He wanted to bring one over to the DK earlier, but for some reason, somehow it landed here. Oh, that's a shame. Imagine, after he forces the Archmage to TP here, if then he can harass with more skeletons against the peasants. Oh, 
And now a mantle's on the ground. What the hell is going on? So many items on the ground. DK now almost level 3. Three peasants were missing to get that level 3. And he might have gotten it had he had more skellies down here. Lich coming. And the slaughterhouse. The slaughterhouse could be easily cancelled. And I think that's the goal. Oh, Archmage, by the way, without TP. This is pretty scary. Maybe that's the reason why Mikael went for the staff in the first place. To prevent the Archmage from getting it. DK gets level 3. All ghouls for now survive. But yeah, the thing is, it's only ghouls. There's no fiends. Normally, what makes Undead strong in this matchup, uh, whether it be one base or two base play, or rather, one base versus one base, or Ted Fiend versus Expansion, is the fact that you have fiends quickly, and with fiends you transition very strongly into the late game. With ghouls, it's a different story. Ghouls are alright early on, but in the late game, they're not really that good, even with Frenzy. I think this game is starting to look better and better for Fortitude. Tier 2 now halfway through for him. Mikael still no slaughterhouse. That really hurts. Couple of peasants, couple of footies here go down. But it's all just still completely fine. Blacksmith coming up. Early blacksmith. Does that mean that he wants to go rifles? Not necessarily. He may just want to make the building here to fortify the base. Blacksmith has a ton of HP. Way more than a shop. Oh, nice surround. But there's a staff. Oh. Alright, use the staff now. Good resources now in Fortitude. Also has the supply open. Should be tier 3 and MK right away. And just Knight's Gyros. Always works. Or, of course, tanks, as we know. Fortitude can also be a big fan of tanks, even if they're not so much the meta anymore. Frankly, we have been seeing tanks a bit more lately, especially against the Banshee play. Is Fortitude romantic? Yes. He first became famous with the ID romantic. But then after some scandals, uh, he did a bit of a rebrand. Calling himself Fortitude. Oh, look at this Archmage. Hello. Boink. Takes that ghoul gladly. And that is the big problem with ghouls in the late game. They die very easily. It's hard to keep them alive. Unlike fiends, which you can keep alive pretty well between aura, coil, and statues, and with them having high HP and long range. Oh, Mika is really struggling here. Oh, trying to surround the lich. Or go for the fiend. There is a mana potion. It's gonna pop, pop the Book of the Dead as well. The Fiend still falls. Oh, nobody's available. Footies are going down, but that's what the footies are supposed to do. They're supposed to sacrifice themselves to buy time. In the meantime, Fortitude has double workshop. Double barracks. I love it. In my opinion, that's basically always the right thing to go for, for human, when playing Fast Expo. Against DK, that is. Against Crypt Lord, it's different. But against DK Fiends, double racks for Knights, and double Workshop for Gyros. There's also an option here for Fortitude to go for tanks. But it can be risky. If the tanks are just easily dealt with and the Undead feeds on their experience, levels up, 
and then you're left with a small army with hardly any units that can actually fight. It's a bit of a risk to go for tanks. I like the positioning here, by the way. It's going to make it quite hard for the fiends to attack effectively. They basically have to stand over here if they want to attack the towers, and that means that the militia flank could be very strong. Good SimCity here by Fortitude in general, I would say. Now that tier 3 is ready with the knights and the pally and the staff is going to be coming in, he wants to open up the base now so that he doesn't get stuck in the main with the staff. Might be getting stuck here, though. Anyways. We're just creeping for now. Mikael has been known to try to counter-expand in this matchup at times in the late game. But that normally only works if you had a great mid-game and you're not behind. However, in this game, Mikael lost a lot of ghouls, lost a lot of fiends. <laughs> Staffing in with a DK. Alright, that's a cute play. Goes for the Zeppelin to get out of the surround, but it's more resources. It's more resources than going into army. And Mikael still doesn't have that strong force. What makes Happy, among other things, so strong in this matchup is that he gets to 50 supply with a third hero with a perfect army really quickly. And then he doesn't lose anything for like 10 minutes. Heroes, though, for Mikael are looking pretty good. Level 4 and 3 is actually really good. The problem is, however, the army that accompanies the heroes. Thinking about a counter-expansion here with the Acolyte Lumber at the moment, the problem. But the scout just perfect by fortitude. This is just a, a player's super solid game by 40. Very early A-bomb coming in. Can be good for Disease Cloud, but it also means your Focus Fire is going to be not so strong as you're lacking Fiends. Only a single Fiend so far. Now we're going to have two. And I gotta say, I don't know how Mika is supposed to do this. Fortis is just getting richer and richer. She's already got 80 supply. Oh my god, how fast was this? Is this knight stuck? I think he's stuck. Trapped in a little prison. And look at that damage of the knights. As we know, against medium armor, extremely strong. And it takes a lot of great micro. Oh, nice staff play here again. Takes out a footy. Alright. Oh my god, imagine if he steals the item, that would have been sick. But no, item goes to 40. <laughs> There's a Zeppelin here again. Couple of cute plays. Cute plays by Mikael. But in the grand scheme of things, what you need here is, you know, solid timings, good harass, and excellent micro. Oh, dodges the storm bolt. Here we go. Speaking of cute plays. But Lich is still hurt. And Lich might be dead. Oh, Mikael, though, TPing out last second, trying to save a second hero. That was close. Less than 50 HP right there. Players forces are under attack. And now we see the expansion coming up for the undead. Disease Cloud is doing a good job right now. This Knight Gyro army is very high DPS and good mobility, but it struggles in the sustain. Paladin is the only healer, and single target heal is alright with him, especially when he gets level 3, it's really strong. But the attack. mass healing, the AoE healing, is very lackluster. So, some regen scrolls are going to be needed here for 40 to heal the knights back up again. How do they have so much lumber, by the way? Didn't even have a shredder. Great lumber still uh, remaining for 40. DK close to level 5. Is he going Banshee's happy style? Nope. But the expansion is about to finish. The game is not totally lost for Mikael yet. If he holds on for another 5 minutes, maybe he can do it with the economy of the expansion. But holding on for that long... It's not gonna be so easy. 
Focus fire on the Lich, there's gonna be another coil. Mana potion was used. There's never an orb of fire yet, by the way. I don't know if that's a deliberate choice or if you just forgot about it. Normally, you really want to have an orb. It adds up so much damage over time. MK had to be staffed out. The nuke against him is still dangerous. But the knights on three attack upgrades. I want to see when they... Look at, look at the when they attack a fiend. Wait a minute, where is it? Alright, this fiend is almost dead already. Well, everything for Mika is basically dead already. Fortitude still at 80 supply. He's got the third base coming up. Towers, hell yeah, why not? And now he can take out the Undead expansion. And that is... A shellacking! Fortitude just... In charge. This whole game. As I've said for some time now. This is the best that... Human has had it in this matchup for a long, long time. This matchup, of course, was undead favored for many years. But I think this time is over. I think it's either 50-50 or human favored nowadays. Even if Todd will not believe me, I really think uh, the times have changed. Forty going to TP out before he loses too much. Oh my god, he's so rich. And now he's exactly where he wants to be. Triple base, 4-3-3 heroes, crazy strong knights. And he could even go... Dude, he's still not buying an orb of fire! 40! What the hell? TP? <laughs> so at this point, it does very much look like a deliberate choice. It just... Seems like he feels that the orb isn't worth the gold cost. Which I find very weird. We've seen that from other humans as well, especially Johnny Cage over in Europe. I think the first time you go into upkeep, like the first time you break with knights on tier 3 to try to hold the undead push, I think also then it can be a good idea to skip on orb and uh, staff for a while to be able to get up to 60, 65, and be 70 supply fast, because you need a certain amount of knights and gyros, and that's more important than an orb and a staff early. But, if you're sitting at AE supply already, and such a strong position, well. Mikhail now going for plan B, the expansion didn't work, so now he is going for the happy style, late game, double tempo, Trying to go for Banshees to possess these knights. And the Dreadlord third, by the way. Hmm. With the intention probably being to sleep the Paladin to prevent Holy Light, I would imagine. Forty could easily go to 100 supply here if he wants. Are what are these boys attacking. doing? Militia? Oh, I think he should have healed his A-bomb. So does he start doing a good job now? Oh, Death Knight finds himself on the wrong side of the tracks. Yeah, has to TP out. Look at that down from the Knights. Oh my god, just one hit against the Fiend. Doing like a hundred damage. Alright, it's, it's, it's... How much was it? Like 70 damage. 70 damage from one hit. It's pretty good though. 3-3 <laughs> Knights. 13 armor. Thanks also to the aura of the Paladin. Damage against these fiends quite significant. And Fortitude, understandably, feeling very confident here, fighting into the end of the base. Doesn't care. He knows how rich he is, he knows how strong he is. Perfect timing on the breakers, by the way. As he sees the banshees coming in, you want to go for breakers to be able to reflect the curse. I think he's just cleaning up. 
I guess once 40 runs out of mana here, he could be in a bit of trouble. Before that happens, the Dreadlord should be falling. We should have some more mana on the Mountain King. And Mikael calls for the GG. And that was a little more one-sided than I thought it would be. Mikael with the unconventional ghoul opening. Which, honestly, especially in Asia, we've been seeing more and more. But as I pointed out in the early game, um, that ghoul opening does not transition into the late game nearly as well as the Fiend build does, the Ted Fiend build does. Unless you're going for a fast expansion, then it's a different story. But if you play one base harass with a ghoul opening, you have to do big damage against the human economy killing especially a ton of peasants, which simply wasn't the case this game. Only two peasants died in that early game, which is not enough. One problem there certainly was the Rod of Necromancy somehow being left on the ground. That was a bit of an oversight by Mikael, and uh, you have to be very precise in this matchup. Whether you're playing DK Ghouls or whether you're playing a uh, Ted Fiend build, you have to be really precise with your harass. You have to slow down the human because, as we saw, once the human gets to 80 Supply Knights Gyros, and if on top of that he even has strong hero levels, it's very hard for Undead to fight that. Map number two. Might be a better one. For Mikael, especially if he wants to play this ghoul aggressive style again, there's some really good maps for this. Amazonia, amazing for that style. Also Concealed Hill, absolutely tremendous. Other than that, though... Other than that, the expansion is pretty safe to creep. The question, of course, is what the vetoes are. I am not aware of what the players vetoed. But it would be safe to assume that either Concealed Hill or AZ was vetoed by Fortitude. As you guys may know, between the games, Mikael sometimes needs a bit of a smoke break, so uh, this is going to take a moment. Going to give himself also the chance to mentally reset. Oh, wait a minute. We got the invite already. Really? Alrighty then. Map number two is going to be Last Refuge, which I am still of the opinion that Undead should veto it, actually. Unless you find Wand of Illusion, I think this is a really good map for human. But we'll see. If that is going to be the idea. Map number two. Mikael trying to shrug off the loss of the first map. Didn't even take a smoke break. That's kind of unusual for him, to be fair. Is it going to be the same strat again, or are we going to see something different now? Mikael starting in the top right. With a ghoul opening again. Alrighty. Could also mean Crypt Lord. Which I would not be a big fan of. Especially on this map, Archmage counter expansion is so strong against Crypt Lord because of the Merc camp. It's always a bit of a gamble for the human. If you expect, or especially if you know that you that the opponent will be playing a Ghoul opening here, the best thing human can do is go for the Merc camp creep first. Very rewarding, great camp to go for. But if you're wrong. And the opponent plays Ted Fiends and starts harassing you with a DK. 
This can be a huge disaster. The first scout footman is going to tell us a lot. Normally, as the human, when you see a scouting acolyte, you don't want to go for this camp first, because scouting acolyte normally means aggression. If you don't see a scouting acolyte, you can expect an expansion, and in that case, you can go for this one safely. Oh, baby! Oh my god! I didn't even see it. Paladin and Dreadlord. What? I can kind of understand the Dreadlord, you know, come in with a bit of a surprise, try to go for the fast expansion, and then try to cheese out the game with sleep surrounds and a lot of economy. A paladin? Like, when is the paladin ever better than an Archmage? All right, all right. I mean, I like it. It's cool. It's fun to see these different heroes. And if the Paladin gets to level 3 or 4 quickly, he can also be very obnoxious with the Holy Light and uh, Divine Shield harass. Ford is going to take some damage creeping this camp, finds the Lionhorn. Honestly, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. That means he can easily go into Divine Shield now and still have the aura available. Of course, it's a bit weaker. Of an aura with 1.5. Oh wow, in the tooltip it only says one one bonus armor. Whoops. Whoopsie. Pretty cool though. Pretty cool for sure. A player's forces are under attack. You can treat the Merc Camp. Well the nice thing with the Dreadlord here is you can sleep the high priest, right? Oh, that's pretty cool. That makes creeping this so much easier. Oh, the ghouls all pretty close to dying, but I guess they just barely survive. Expansion isn't coming up yet. Mikhail perhaps mismanaging his resources a bit. This narrow tower in the main seems like a bit of a waste. He's going for the Berserker now. Hmm. Paling is level 3 first. Time for some boots of speed, eh? Forces are under attack. No boots? Okay. Kelly staff only. Dreadlord having aura is kind of weird. Normally you want to go into carry and swarm quickly. Ah! He found the aura. Ah, okay. That's why I was confused. Alright. Good item then also for him. Oh, it's going to be a TP force. Well, he has divine shield actually. Alright. Alright. Trying to hold this around. 15 seconds though on the divine shield. It's a Shadow Priest. That's a big deal. Oh, sleep. Counter surround. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Trying to staff. That doesn't work. At least with the staff, he forces more mana. Oh, the ghoul goes down. Oh my god, the Divine Shield is ready again. Oh my goodness. This is starting to turn into a disaster for Mikael. Toilight saves the... the... Uh, footman. Dude, my brain is on delay today. Expansion is coming, but boy is it late. Expansion over here standing attack. already. Lumber looking decent for Fortitude, can start his tech momentarily. Second crypt coming for Mikael, he notices he has no way of spending his gold. And I'll... Oh! He wakes up the creeps! 
With the carrion swarm. Hadouken! Shop. Tech. And then 42 is gonna be looking good. But the expansion for Mikael is gonna finish, so it's not a complete disaster, perhaps. A town is under siege. Oh, this is a nice little ghoul run by. Paladin can be a strong hero, but he's certainly not the fastest, not the most mobile. Does have a tele staff here, I suppose, but he doesn't have boots. Divine shield once again. One holy light. It's ready in a moment. Oh my god, last second save. Ooh, that was clutch. And that's level 4 now for the pally. Must be level 2 divine shield, which lasts a long time. Carry and swarm again. Dreadlord. Trying his best. But he's low HP now. Doesn't have an aura here to heal him up. What he needs is sacrificial dagger. Ritual dagger. Oh, got a mud golem. That's pretty cool. But the next divine shield is ready. Oh, and so is the holy light. This pal is working out pretty damn well. And Mikael in all sorts of trouble. 25 supply for him, only going for all the mercs that he can, but just dealing with footies is proving to be very problematic. We got a blacksmith coming up as well. Double berserker on the undead side. Not every day that you see that. Or Acolytes are going down. We basically have no mining at this expansion over here. 42 at around 50. Just tier 1 units, but they're doing the job for now. And they reach tier 2 very soon. And probably gonna have it rushed to tier 3 once again. And I bet my behind that we're gonna see some tanks this game. Well, I guess the Dreadlord is a pretty good counter though against the tanks. With Carrion Swarm working against mechanical units. But 40 is so far ahead, I could absolutely see some tanks over here. A player's forces are under attack. A town no second hero. <laughs> this might just be Paladin Solo. <laughs> it's also getting closer and closer to level 5. Getting bonus XP right now. Oh, that was a big Karen Swarm. And 40 gonna TP out. Trying to leave before he loses too much. Oh, Berserker went down though. That was a big experience boost also for the Dreadlord. But still only tier 1 for Mikael, man. <sighs> Rough game. A player's force this could be the 2 0 for Fortitude right here, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, it's looking quite like it. Oh, Griffin Aviary, actually. Alright. Also a fun strat. Not as fun as tanks, perhaps. At least, you know, for fortitude. If he wants to build a real army, I think he's gonna need a second hero, though. Player's forces are under attack. Mikael hasn't found... The way yet to tier 2, there we go. Finally starts tier 2, but man, oh man. That is so late. Triple Griffian Aviary coming up once again. The Lumber for Fortitude seems to be looking decent again. It's got lots of Lumber Workers. And we got the Griffin upgrades coming already. And what is Mikael gonna do against Griffins? He's got a bit of piercing damage, but it... Definitely doesn't seem like it's enough. Fortitude. Pretty much in c control of this whole series so far. Oh! Earth Necromancy on the ground! <laughs> you can see- Oh, we have Blood Mage! Big Invo Potion has to be used right away. The Dreadlord almost getting surrounded. 
Okay, the Blood Mage is a really smart choice right now. For the Siphon Mana, so good. And he's actually... He actually finds that surround somehow. Keep it into the corner, has to unsummon. Oh boy. It's a rough, rough series for Mikael. Taking three Zygos at a time. That also seems to be a bit more than necessary. A player's force is and as tier 3 is finished, we see Dragonhawks first. Alright. Cloud upgrade on the way. Man, I haven't seen Cloud in forever. The best upgrade in the game against towers. A town is under siege. And it's just Dragonhawks. What the hell? He's not even making any Griffiths. Just Dragonhawks. Uh, about to level 5 over here. And there we go. Cloud. Seriously, I haven't seen this in so long. Very, very effective. Problem against Undead usually is Dragonhawks are complete garbage because of fiends. But in this weird game, uh, it does work out, I guess. Footies are gonna be going down, but Fortu is getting a lot of value out of them while he can. Oh, last second heal potion. Oh my goodness. One more sleep comes through. But uh, that seems to be the last one here for a while. Okamaru goes down. More experience going to Fortitude. And the Chinese player looking absolutely in control of this game. No question about it. We'd love to see a, a Mountain King third here as well to have a bit of Stormbolt. Garg is now trying to come in. But, well, Dragonhawks do have Shackles. If the Gargs can completely outnumber, they can do it, but it's just so many Dragonhawks. And that's it. GG. Well played. And the game goes to Fortitude. Fortitude moves on in the upper bracket. Our first qualified player for DreamHack Winter Asia. With a great performance.